Apollonius of Tyana, sometimes also called Apollonios of Tyana, was a Greek Neo-Pythagorean philosopher from the town of Tyana in the Roman province of Cappadocia in Anatolia, being a first-century orator and philosopher around the time of Jesus. He was compared with Jesus of Nazareth by Christians in the 4th century and by other writers in modern times. Life dates. Apollonius was born into a respected and wealthy Greek family. Although the precise dates of his birth and death are uncertain, most scholars agree that he was a contemporary of Jesus of Nazareth. His primary biographer, Philostratus the Elder, places him circa 3 BCC. 97 A. D. Comparisons with Jesus. Biblical scholar Bat D. Ehrman relates that in the introduction to his textbook on the New Testament, he describes an important figure from the first century without first revealing he is writing about the stories attached to Apollonius of Tyana. Even before he was born, it was known that he would be someone special. A supernatural being informed his mother the child she was to conceive would not be a mere mortal but would be divine. He was born miraculously, and he became an unusually precocious young man. As an adult he left home and went on an itinerant preaching ministry, urging his listeners to live, not for the material things of this world, but for what is spiritual. He gathered a number of disciples around him, who became convinced that his teachings were divinely inspired, in no small part because he himself was divine. He proved it to them by doing many miracles healing the sick, casting out demons, and raising the dead. But at the end of his life he roused opposition, and his enemies delivered him over to the Roman authorities for judgment. Still, after he left this world, he returned to meet his followers in order to convince them that he was not really dead but lived on in the heavenly realm. Later some of his followers wrote books about him. Ehrman goes on to say that Apollonius was a real person person and that his followers believed Jesus to be a fraud. Socinus hierarchies argued in the 3rd century that the doctrines and the life of Apollonius were more valuable than those of Jesus's. The viewpoint reportedly held by both Voltaire and Charles Blunt during the Age of Enlightenment. In his 1909 book, the Christ, John Remsburg postulated that the religion of Apollonius disappeared because the proper conditions for its development did not exist. Buddhism, Christianity and Islam thrived however, because the existing conditions were favorable. In his 1949 book The Hero with a Thousand Faces, comparative mythology scholar Joseph Campbell lists both Apollonius and Jesus as examples of individual individuals who shared similar hero stories, along with Krishna, Buddha and others. Similarly, Robert M. Price in his 2011 The Christ Myth Theory and Its Problems, notes that the ancients often compared Jesus with Apollonius and that they both fit the mythic hero archetype. G.K. Chesterton, however, noted that the unique trial, suffering and death of Christ stand in stark opposition to the stories about Apollonius which he felt were very likely spurious. Similarities shared by the stories about Apollonius and the life of Jesus' birth miraculously announced by God. Religiously precocious as a child, asserted to be a native speaker of Aramaic influenced by Plato, reflected Platonism, wealth, followed abstinence and asceticism, wore long hair and robes, were unmarried and childless, were anointed with oil, went to Jerusalem, spoke in, saw and predicted the future, performed miracles, healed the sick, cast out evil spirits, drove out demons, raised the daughter of a from the dead, spoke as a lawgiver, was on a mission to bring two, believed to be, saviors from heaven, were accused of being a magician, were accused of killing a boy, condemned, imprisoned, was assumed into heaven, ascended into heaven, appeared posthumously to a detractor as a brilliant light, had his image revered, 
historical facts, with the exception of the Adna inscription, little can be derived from sources other than Philostratus. As James Francis put it, the most that can be said, is that Apollonius appears to have been a wandering ascetic philosopher, wonderworker of a type common to the eastern part of the early empire. What we can safely assume is that he was indeed a Pythagorean and as such, in conformity with the Pythagorean tradition, opposed animal sacrifice, and lived on a frugal, strictly vegetarian diet. A minimalist view is that he spent his entire life in the cities of his native Asia Minor and of northern Syria, in particular his hometown of Tyana, Ephesus, Aegae, and Antioch, though the letters suggest wider travels, and there seems no reason to deny that. Like many wandering philosophers, he at least visited Rome. As for his philosophical convictions, we have an interesting, probably authentic fragment of one of his writings where he expresses his view that God, who is the most beautiful being, cannot be influenced by prayers or sacrifices and has no wish to be worshipped by humans, but can be reached by a spiritual procedure involving Naus, because he himself is pure Naus and Naus is also the greatest faculty of humankind. Miracles. Philostratus implies on one occasion that Apollonius had extrasensory perception. When Emperor Domitian was murdered on September 18, 96 AD, Apollonius was said to have witnessed the event in Ephesus about midday on the day it happened in Rome, and told those present, Take heart, gentlemen, for the tyrant has been slain this day. Both Philostratus and renowned historian Cassius Dio report this incident, probably on the basis of an oral tradition. Both state that the philosopher welcomed the deed as a praiseworthy tyrannicide. Journey to India. Philostratus devoted two and a half of the eight books of his life of Apollonius to the description of a journey of his hero to India. According to Philostratus's life, en route to the far east, Apollonius reached Hierapolis Bambis in Syria, where he met Damis, a native of that city who became his lifelong companion. Pythagoras, whom the Neo-Pythagoreans regarded as an exemplary sage, was believed to have traveled to India. Hence such a feat made Apollonius look like a good Pythagorean who spared no pains in his efforts to discover the sources of Oriental piety and wisdom. As some details in Philostratus's account of the Indian adventure seem incompatible with known facts, modern scholars are inclined to dismiss the whole story is a fanciful fabrication, but not all of them rule out the possibility that the Tyanian actually did visit India. What seemed to be independent evidence showing that Apollonius was known in India has now been proved to be forged. In two Sanskrit texts quoted by Sanskritist Vidushakara Bhattacharya in 1943, he appears as Apollonia in one of them together with Damis. It is claimed that Apollonius and Damis were Western yogis, who later on were converted to the correct Advaita philosophy. Some have believed that these Indian sources derived their information from a Sanskrit translation of Philostratus's work, or even considered the possibility that it was really an independent confirmation of the historicity of the journey to India. Only in 1995 were the passages in the Sanskrit texts proven to be interpolations by a late 19th century forger. Writings Several writings and many letters have been ascribed to Apollonius, but some of them are lost, others have only been preserved in parts of fragments of disputed authenticity. Porphyry and Iamblichus refer to a biography of Pythagoras by Apollonius, which has not survived. It is also mentioned in the Suda. Apollonius wrote a treatise on sacrifices, of which only a short, probably authentic fragment has come down to us. Philostratus's life and the anthology assembled by Joanne Stobaeus contain purported letters of Apollonius. 
Some of them are cited in full, others only partially. There is also an independently transmitted collection of letters preserved in medieval manuscripts. It is difficult to determine what is authentic and what not. Some of the letters may have been forgeries or literary exercises assembled in collections which were already circulated in the 2nd century AD. It has been asserted that Philostratus himself forged a considerable part of the letters he inserted into his work. Others were older forgeries, available to him. Impact. Antiquity in the second century The satirist Lucian of Samosta was a sharp critic of Neo-Pythagoreanism. After 180 AD he wrote a pamphlet where he attacked Alexander of Abinotychus, a student of one of Apollonius's students, as a charlatan, and suggested that the whole school was based on fraud. For this we can infer that Apollonius really had students and that his school survived at least until Lucian's time. One of Philostratus's foremost aims was to oppose this view. Although he related various miraculous feats of Apollonius, he emphasized at the same time that his hero was not a magician, but a serious philosopher and a champion of traditional Greek values. When Emperor Aurelian conducted his military campaign against the Palmyrene Empire, he captured Tyana in 272 AD. According to the Historia Augusta he abstained from destroying the city after having a vision of Apollonius admonishing him to spare the innocent citizens. In Philostratus's description of Apollonius's life and deeds there are a number of similarities with the life and especially the claimed miracles of Jesus. Perhaps this parallel was intentional, but the original aim was hardly to present Apollonius as a rival of Jesus. However, in the late 3rd century Porphyry, an anti-Christian Neoplatonic philosopher, claimed in his treatise against the Christians that the miracles of Jesus were not unique, and mentioned Apollonius as a non-Christian who had accomplished similar achievements. Around 300 Roman authorities used the fame of Apollonius in the struggle to wipe out Christianity. Hierarchies, one of the main instigators of the persecution of Christians in 303, wrote a pamphlet where he argued that Apollonius exceeded Christ as a wonder worker and yet wasn't worshipped as a god, and that the cultured biographers of Apollonius were more trustworthy than the uneducated apostles. This attempt to make Apollonius a hero of the anti-Christian movement provoked sharp replies from Bishop Eusebius of Caesar area and from Lactantius. Eusebius wrote an extant reply to the pamphlet of Hierocles, where he claimed that Philostrata was a fabulist and that Apollonius was a sorcerer in league with demons. This started a debate on the relative merits of Jesus and Apollonius that has gone on in different forms into modern times. In late antiquity talismans made by Apollonius appeared in several cities of the Eastern Roman Empire, as if they they were sent from heaven. They were magical figures and columns erected in public places meant to protect the cities from afflictions. The great popularity of these talismans was a challenge to the Christians. Some Byzantine authors condemned them as sorcery and the work of demons. Others admitted that such magic was beneficial. None of them claimed that it didn't work. In the Western Roman Empire, Sidonius Apollinari was a Christian admirer of Apollonius in the 5th century. He produced a Latin translation of Philostratus's life, which is lost. The Hay, the tablet of wisdom written by Behela, the founder of the Bahá'í faith, names Balanus as a great philosopher, who surpassed everyone else in the diffusion of arts and sciences and soared into the loftiest heights of humility and supplication. The use of talismans is common place in Babi and Bahá'í writings. Modern era, beginning in the early 16th century, there was great interest in Apollonius in Europe, but the traditional ecclesiastical viewpoint prevailed. 
and until the Age of Enlightenment the Tanyan was usually treated as a demonic magician and a great enemy of the Church who collaborated with the devil and tried to overthrow Christianity. Comparisons between Apollonius and Jesus became commonplace in the 17th and 18th centuries in the context of polemic about Christianity. Several advocates of Enlightenment, Deism and anti-Church positions saw him as an early forerunner of their own ethical and religious ideas, a proponent of a universal, non-denominational religion compatible with reason. These comparisons continued into the 20th century. In 1680, Charles Blunt, a radical English dice, published the first English translation of the first two books of Philostratus's life with an anti-church introduction. In the Marquis de Sade's dialogue between a priest and a dying man, the dying man compares Jesus to Apollonius as a false prophet. Some early to mid-20th century theosophists, notably C. W. Ledbetter, Alice A. Bailey, and Benjamin Krem, have maintained that Apollonius of Tyana was the reincarnation of the being they call the Master Jesus. Helena Blavatsky in 1881 refers to Apollonius of Tyana as the great thaumaturgist of the 2nd century A.D. In the mid-20th century, the American expatriate poet Ezra Pound evoked Apollonius in his later cantos as a figure associated with sun worship and as a messianic rival to Christ, Pound identified him as Arian within an anti-Semitic mythology, and celebrated his sun worship and aversion to ancient Jewish animal sacrifice. In Gerald Messadier's The Man Who Became God, Apollonius appeared as a wandering philosopher and magician of about the same age as Jesus. The two of them supposedly met. In his 1965 introduction to a reprint of Kenneth Sylvan Guthrie's 1900 book The Gospel of Apollonius of Tyana, Hilton Hotema compared Apollonius to Jesus by noting that there is much historical data surrounding the life of the Tyanian, but that Jesus is unknown outside of the New Testament. In fiction, in Bengali poet Alarel's translation of Nizami Ganjavis Iskandanama, Apollonius helps Alexander ward off magic spells of his Arthustrian fire worshipper on the way to Ispahan. In Florbert's The Temptation of St. Anthony, Apollonius appears as one of the magicians who tempt the main character. Apollonius appears as a fictional character in the 1935 novel The Circus of Dr. Lau in its 1964 film adaptation, Seven Faces of Dr. Lau. In these, Apollonius works in the circus as a fortune teller who is under a curse. He sees the future, but can only speak the exact truth, thus seeming to be cruel and hateful. In the film version, he is blind and weary after many years of predicting disappointment for his clients. The plot of El Sprague de Camp and Fletcher Pratt's 1948 fantasy novel The Carnelian Cube hinges on a magical artifact passed down by Apollonius. In the 1975 work The Illuminatus, Trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shea, Apollonius appears in discussion with Abby Hoffman. Apollonius appears as a fictional character in the 1977 television series The Fantastic Journey in the seventh episode, Funhouse. In this episode, Apollonius attempts to take possession of the scientist Willow Way in a funhouse but is thwarted by Varian, a man from the future possessing awesome powers. Apollonius appears as a fictional character in the 1996 short story The Garden of Tantalus by Brian Stableford, which combines two of the accounts from Life of Apollonius of Tyana and removes the mystical aspects, turning it into a detective story. The narrator, Manippus from the account of Apollonius and the Lamia, blames Damis for making Apollonius a magician by elaborating on what little of the story he knew. The story was published in classical whodunits. Apollonius serves as mentor to a main character in Stephen Saylor's historical novel Empire for much of the work. 
In Keats' poem about the Lamia myth, he mentions Apollonius's intervention, revealing Lamia's true form to her love Elysius. In Friedrich Schiller's Gothic novel The Gossier, the Sicilian trickster suggests Apollonius as one of the possible identities of the incomprehensible. Apollonius of Tyana has a major role in the background to Richard Cooper's story The Custodians. The story assumes that Apollonius discovered a scientific way of seeing the future and that his method was rediscovered by a medieval sage. A succession of custodians at a monastery in South France, using an Apollonian nexus, then saw and wrote down events fifty years in the future, until a final one in the 20th century saw in advance but could not prevent a destructive nuclear war. In Key Longfellow's The Secret Magdalene Apollonius meets F. Hosha the Nazarene in a monastery atop Mount Carmel. While there Apollonius, who was legendarily told he would be overshadowed by a greater man, recognized Jeff Hosha as that greater man. In Jan Potocki's The Manuscript Found in Saragossa the story of Manipus's of Lysias' encounter with Apollonius of Tyana is recounted. It is taken from Book 3 of Philostratus's Life of Apollonius of Tyana. The story is recounted during the eleventh day. Editions, Philostratus, Apollonius of Tyana, Letters of Apollonius, Ancient Testimonia, Eusbius's Reply to Hierarchies, ed. Christopher P. Jones, Harvard University Press, Cambridge 2006, ISBN 0-674-996178, Philostratus, The Life of Apollonius of Tyana, ed. Christopher P. Jones, Volume 1 and 2, Harvard University Press, Cambridge 2005, ISBN 0-674-99613-5 and ISBN 0-674-99614-3.